In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we solve quadratic equations, okay? And to be specific, we're going to be looking at how we solve quadratic equations by the process of factorization, okay? Good? Now, we would have been already familiar with how a quadratic expression looks, okay? And we have discussed that a quadratic expression in its general form is written as ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so since we're working with equation, now we equate that to zero. So the general form of a quadratic equation now is the, additional, is the addition of the equal sign and zero. So now we have ax squared plus bx plus c all is equal to zero. Now I have a very important note here that says a quadratic equation must always be equal to zero. So please as we go through these lessons bear this critical point here in mind. Okay, uh, Always equal to zero. Now before we get into solving this quadratic e equation uh, let me state that there are different methods used to solve a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation can be solved by factorization. Uh, the quadratic formula can be used to solve a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation also can be solved by completing the square. And also a quadratic equation can be solved by graphing. So there are four basic way, methods rather at this level that we can use to solve a quadratic. Okay. However, for this video, we'll be focusing on solving quadratics by factorization. Now, uh, we would have been already familiar with the process of factorization. Okay. So basically, if I'm solving by factorization, I am going to take my coefficient of x squared, which is a. So I'm going to say a times c, and I need the product of a c. a is 1 times c is negative 12. So that will give me negative 12. Okay. Now I've found my product AC, which is negative 12. Now I need to find factors of negative 12. When I add them, I get the coefficient of B. And here we can list them a, that A is equal to 1, okay, which is the coefficient of X squared. Uh, B is equal to 1 also, which is the coefficient of x, and my c would be negative 12. c is equal to negative 12. Okay, so now I need to find my factors of 12. So I'm going to find my factors of 12. Okay, so I have 1 times 12 is 12. I have 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Okay, and that's it. Now, what I need to do, I need to adjust my negative sign. I know that a positive times a negative will give me a negative. However, I need to, so it's such that when I add my factors, I get the coefficient of x to be 1. Okay. Now, just look at by intuition, I know that if I want a positive one, my largest factor should carry the sign that B carries. Okay, and B, I have a positive B. So basically, my larger factor should carry a positive sign. So I'm going to change the smaller one to the negative. Now I know that negative 3 times 4 will give me a negative 12. And when I add 4 plus or 4 minus 3 rather, I would get a positive 1. Beautiful. So now I can expand this, right? So I'm going to say x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 12. And that is equal to 0. I must carry my equal to 0 because I'm working with an equation. So I have, I'm going to take out what is common. So I have a x that is common. Okay, open bracket, x into x square will leave me with x. And x into 4x, I will have a positive 4. Close my bracket, bring down that sign. And I'm asking myself what is common to 3x and 12. I know that I see that I have a 3 here. Okay, so I'm saying 3 is common. So 3 into negative 
3x will leave me with a positive x. And a negative 3 into a negative 12 will leave me with a positive 4. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. Cool? Now, again, we have the same thing in the brackets. So I'm just going to rewrite what's inside one of my bracket. Okay? And then I'm going to combine what's on the outside. I have a x here. And I have a minus 3. But we should always remember, all of that is equal to 0 because now I'm working with an equation. Now, this is pretty easy. When I reach here, basically, what this is saying, something times something is equal to 0. And we would have already known that only 0 times any number, 0 times any number, 0 times 5 is equal to 0, 0 times negative 2 is equal to 0, anything times 0, or 0 times 0 is equal to 0. So what this is saying, one of these, if, if, if the product of two things is 0, then both numbers, both numbers must be 0, or one of the numbers must be 0, as we have proven here. Okay, so let's solve for x now because we're solving, solve by factorization, so we're going to solve for x. So when we reach here, we're just basically going to take out what's inside our bracket. So now I'm going to say x plus 4 is equal to 0, or, 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 and we have here now, let me change my color x minus 3 is equal to 0. So basically what I did, I took out what's inside of this bracket and equated it to 0, and then I took out what's inside this bracket and I equated it to 0. So now I can solve for x, okay? So I can say, to, I have to move the 4 to this side, okay? So I'm going to say x plus 4 minus 4 is equal to 0 minus 4 okay so because sorry because the 4 was added to x I had to subtract f sorry uh, yes I had to subtract 4 from both sides okay so this 4 would cancel that 4 so I'm left with x is equal to negative 4 because this 0 we would lose that 0 now it's the same thing that we do here I'm going to say okay, oops let me just move this a bit just give me one sec and let's just get rid of this here let me take this over here a bit I need some space to work with so we're going to uh, okay good so let's put this here okay guys to, so that we have a little bit more space now what I'm gonna say here is the same thing okay I have a 3 but 3 is being subtracted from x okay so to move the 3 to the next side to solve for x I must do the opposite of that okay so I'm going to say the opposite of of subtraction is addition so I'm going to say x minus 3 and I'm going to add 3 to both sides Okay, so I would have a 0 plus 3. Okay, so here I know that that 3 would cancel out that. Okay, so I have a x is equal to positive 3. And those are my answers. It's that easy. Okay, so you just basically follow the simple steps in factorization. And after you're through with your factorization and you have your factors, you're going to equate both of your factors to zero and then simply solve the equations for x. And it's that easy. In the next video, we look at this question. Okay, bye bye.